everybody, you're watching Managing Day to Day with me, Christina Laster, and National Parents Union. Hello, I hope you're all well. I hope that you are all thriving. Hi, America's beautiful children. We love you as always. Um, and you know, we are here today with a very special guest on a special edition. That's why we didn't start at the normal time. And so I'd like to bring uh, my special guest out right now. Her name is Toya Agarin. And I will let her actually, I call her Auntie Gigi, you know? And so um, I think that that's respectful. So I'll let her tell who she is. Go on Auntie Gigi, tell them who you are. <laughs> Hi, I'm Toya Agarin and I'm a grandparent. That's why they call me Gigi. Also, mm -hmm. I'm a parent of three beautiful children of which my youngest son um, went to KIPP, Philadelphia um, Charter Schools. And also I am a board member at KIPP, Philadelphia Charter Schools. Yay, shout out to KIPP. <laughs> we love good schools. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. And so, you know, we are talking about your journey, right? Yeah. Um, and respect an honor for that journey and how you are at this place of being able to um, have balance in your life. A lot of times, you know, like even me, I just go from battle to battle to battle to battle. Um, and it's like having that balance, that, that calm in the storm, that moment of peace, right? So let's talk a little bit about that. Well, since we're talking about health, and um, self-care. I would like to start off with an exercise, okay? Okay. All right, so what I would like you to do in our audience is just to sit back, relax, put your hands on your lap, put your feet flat on the floor. And what I want really, all I want you to do is take a breather. I want you to breathe in for the count of five and blow out. And we're gonna do this three times. Feet start flat with, on the floor. Feet, feet flat on the hands floor. Hands in my lap. Hands in your lap. And all I want you to do is breathe in for the count of five. One, two, three, four, five. And then breathe out. Let's do it again. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five. Breathe out. One more time. Breathe in. One, two, three, four, five, breathe out. Now what that does is that just centers you, right? And it centered me because I'm a little nervous. So it just like takes the edge off and puts you in a mindful in the present. And that's, that's what mindfulness is really all about is the present. Yeah. So, yeah. So thank you for that. I mean, welcome. you know, midday centering for me, it's 1136. I need it. And uh, I'm going to be doing that more often. So, so that's how my journey really started of learning about mindfulness is because of my children that I love so much. My kids are 30, 29, and um, 22. So Christina, like I, I was talking to you before, I was telling you how my mother is still about having a quality education. I went to private schools just like you. Mm -hmm. I was one of few black ch children that attended those schools. I went to a private college like you, one of few black people that attended the college at that time. And so it was instilled in me for a long period of time. So when I had children, naturally I wanted the same thing for them. Okay. Right. So I, right. Sent, I sent my kids to, and this is the mistake that some parents make sometimes. Right. They send them to the same schools, thinking that that quality is the same. Woo. Right. Well, well, I'll tell you what, parents out there, what you really should do is do your investigation before you send your child to that local neighborhood school. And this was a private school that still lacked the basics, you know, mm -hmm. and, and everybody has this fight about private, public and charter. Right. I just want a high quality education and any. Yep, that's right. That's right. You know, Sorry. It could be, it could be a, a dilapidated building, but it, right. but it must have a leader inside of that building. And that's, that's what we're looking for. But anyway, so as my kids um, graduated, they went to a private high school. And then I noticed in 10th grade with my son that he was lacking the basics. 
Okay, and mm. tenth grade. Like, you said tenth grade. Girl, please. It was tenth grade. I'm gonna be honest with myself because at that time I was getting my um, I was doing my career, single mom, sending my kids to great schools, but at the right. same time, some of those schools were lacking. I know. Trust me. And, but you know what, though? We as parents, and parents, I need you to hear what Auntie Gigi is saying, okay? Um, you really got to be making informed decisions and pay attention to, to those informed decisions that you make, right? Even if I um, send my kid to a school that is well acclaimed and esteemed and find out six months to a year later, they're not doing such a good job, I'm going to pull them out. And I'm going to go make another informed decision, right? Because that might not be the space for your kid. They might have got uh, esteemed and acclaimed by what they did with other children, but your child might not be thriving in that environment. And so don't feel bad about pausing in the middle of a year and saying, this is not the choice for my kid. I have to do something that I'm going to see results um, and we have a tendency of trusting the people that are entrusted to educate our children and find out, wow, they didn't. Somebody dropped the ball. So yeah, definitely talk about that, right? Yeah, and you know, in my journey, I blame myself for that, you know, and I'm gonna take some, I mean, that's my child. So I, I mean, and how can I entrust somebody with, the, with their education you they know, were at so I, school, Toy. Hey, let me tell you something. I took them out. I took them out oh, in the middle I of know. 10th grade and transferred them. And then right. transferred them again. Okay, so I right. did it twice, you know. Right. But, I mean, so they both graduated from high school. And my son did a, a, a few years at the Art Institute here as a college. Mm -hmm. uh, he still needed, like, remedial. They both needed remedial help. My daughter, she graduated from Moore College of Art and Design, Right. And of course, like here I am with the book. She just came hey. out with a book, right? And it's called Coloring for the Culture. You guys need to check out that because I saw it and it's amazing and you need to get a copy. That's all exactly. I'm And it supports all children of color because out there there's no coloring books with, of children of color. And this is what this is. So it's on Amazon. But anyway, so back to that. So at that time when I saw my children, my all eldest children graduating, I had the same little boy Mm -hmm. in that same school and Christina do I tell you my heart was like oh my god I got to get him out and that's mm -hmm. when I found Kip so yeah. I found Kip in the sixth grade he was in sixth grade on a third grade reading level and this is why I'm gonna tell you I love Kip because they taught my baby how to read and not only that he excelled okay right. he, he was taking when he went to his first year in um high school he was taking AP classes so come that's on right right he was he was he was awesome so the first year of 10th grade, now listen to this. This is the story here, right? Because right down the street, there's a special admit school. It's called Central. I'll just put it right out there, right? It's a special admit school. Like, I could have sent my son there, but I was like, I think I'm going to keep him in the hands of Kit because I knew what Kit was already doing for my son. And I wasn't trusting anybody. Although the um, special admit school was right down the street. So mm -hmm. I... He took three buses to go to school, three buses in the morning. So the first day of 10th grade, he called me and said, mom, can you um, take me to school? And I was like, no, you're fine, boy, go ahead. And the next knock at the door, five minutes later, my son had been hit by a car, okay? So when I ran up the street, I saw my son in the ground, in the street, Mind you, I'm drinking some water because I'm like, go ahead, go ahead. Anxiety going right back up again, girl. But that's okay. We got time. You know, we manage moment by moment, day by day on this show. And I appreciate you telling this story. Yep. So, so actually, so girl, we went through so much. He went to the emergency ward. My son was in a coma for two weeks. My son's jaw was wired shut. We mm. ended up um, transferring to another hospital for um, rehabilitation. And um, he had to learn how to walk, um, speech, OT, all of it, psychiatrist, everything. So this is another reason why, um, and I'm not here to plug in Kip. I'm just here to plug in the support. Because, right. you know what I mean? And, and the thing was, when, we, when he left the hospital like three months later, because we had been in the hospital for three months, and we, when we left the hospital, we sat around this conference table 
and it had to be like 15 people. Most of them were, were from Children's Hospital, and I will always give a big up to Children's Hospital because mm -hmm. they saved my son's life. But also, it was it was OT, all these therapists, OT, occupational, mm -hmm. um, therapeutic, um, speech, the neurologist, everybody sitting there, and it was me, my friend, Karen, who's my parent advocate, and um, someone from KIPP. Like this wow. special ed person came and we sat there as a team and, and created a succession plan for him, you know, and that's and amazing. That amazing. just goes to show you yes. what could be done. And I'm drinking my sparkling water. I know y'all see me with cans every day. I ain't drinking no soda. Um, it just goes to show you what could be done when people have the heart to do it. Yeah. Right. If you have the heart to teach, if you have the heart for the children, you're going to do whatever it takes. You're going to make it happen. And that's what you're talking about with Kip, right? That they had a heart for you and your son, your family. They wanted to see you guys do well. They wanted to see you him succeed. They wanted to see you thrive. And it didn't matter what conditions it was in. Right. right? That's exactly right. That's, now that's deep and that's love. Well, and and the re and and what blew my mind was the reaction from the hospital and the specialists, because right? they said, we've ne never had a school come to this this meeting. Wow. Yeah, and I'm talking Children's Hospital in Philadelphia is is rated like number one in the nation. So for that to happen, I, I was just like amazed. But at the same time, um, I feel as though like Kip had our backs, even had my back. Because mm -hmm. at the same time, and this is where the mental piece comes in, because at the same time I was a manager and I was running like a $28 million department at a mm -hmm. big retailer. So I was a senior manager. And then I also had a child who was a special needs child because he has a brain injury. I'm not telling you right now the boy is blessed and he's like on his way in life. Okay, right now, right to this point. He hey, really son. is. <laughs> I know. Hey, Mayo. I know. He, he is great. Okay, he's fine. Now right? we're nationally proud of you. <laughs> right, and, and the thing is, he can't remember nothing, and I'm saying right. it nicely, but he is fine by God's grace, you know? That's right. But at the same time, I'm gonna tell you, when those two years of trying to, like, so he's in 10th grade, he missed like three months, four months, he went the second quarter. And let me tell you something, this is parents out there, I'm gonna tell you, you have to use your gut feeling right? It's a gut feeling of what you want to do. Because that following Sunday, Christina, I wanted my son, I knew my son was probably going to have to go to summer school, right? And instead of doing that, I sent him to a local um, uh, after school program down mm -hmm. at Temple University, and it's called What's Poppin'. And it's perspective, um, um, youth doing their perspective, pers um, I'm sorry, it's the youth writing, doing short documentaries, on the mm. news and what was happening in the news. And I okay. let my son go there, okay? And when he went, he learned how to navigate the city again. He learned wow. what it's like to be a videographer. He learned, those, those are other needs. Those are other, right. other things that children need to really learn, you know? And, and Kip was, was, was down with it, you know what I mean? Because, and the other good thing about his accident and having a, a brain injury was the fact that everything that he had learned up until the point of the accident was intact. It was just Good. taking, in, okay. taking in new information. Mm -hmm. but, but back to the um, mental health piece, it, it took a toll on me. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a black woman and I figure I'm a superwoman. I could do everything. I can run a $28 million department that wants 110% and a child that is special needs and who's going to need all, all of my time. So it, yes. took, a, it took a mental health toll on my body and it right. also brought out like I have rheumatoid arthritis to a fault that's really really bad right now and um so I took a faith a leap of faith and I, I don't I don't work there anymore you know so yeah trying to get my health back together trying to get my mental health back together is really a toll so that's when like I'm gonna bring in um something I want to read for you Okay, and you want me to share the uh, the link? Yes. And I have to, and I, you know, I just want to take a second to validate what you're saying, um, because 
you know, sometimes we hold on to stuff, like just clench on to it, you know? We just have it in clenched. And we think if we don't hold on to this little whatever, and it could have been a lot at that time, but you needed to do transition into a different life. But sometimes the way up is to surrender that thing that you've been clenching to so long. And you and you don't even know that that's going to be just a freeing moment, right? It's not until hindsight, right? You didn't have the foresight to see, so it was faith. Like, I have to step out on faith and trust that this is what is to be done. Um, and now in hindsight, you're like, yeah, that was okay. You know, um, surrendering things are is okay sometimes. So I have it up on the screen. 25 mental health resources created for the black community you should know about. Uh, go ahead and um, talk So about I'm just that. gonna read a portion because I, you know, I put it, I have a portion of it and it says research as, Research has found that racism can affect one's mental health and it's positive, positively associated with depression anxiety, and anxiety symptoms. Now think about that. And us as um, in our culture, our black culture, I mean, people, are, people don't go to the doctor. It's almost like a taboo. You know what I'm saying? Right. And, and when I left, not the doctor to a psychiatrist or to a therapist, so when I left um, work and I was home and what going to what you said earlier, it, it just took, it took a lot for me to sit back and realize that this is where I'm supposed to be at this given time and no, it's okay not to have to run everything. And yeah, it's okay to like, just take care of your son. Cause you, I mean, I need to navigate the one I got right, you know, through the system, you know what I mean? So, um, and I'm sharing this in the comment field for those of you who want to go and look at that resource that um, Toya shared. Um, definitely, you know, go and look at that um, article. There's tons of resources in there. And so, yep. yes. And mm -hmm. they, also, they also say that um, Black women and all Black and Brown people have access to resources to take care of their mental health. Existing in a society that consistently scrutinized black women were adopted in coping strategies for our survival, like building up walls and car, um, car, um, yeah, yeah. But she also says, listen to this part. I'm sorry, I studied for, started for a second. It's okay. But um, West, Westbrook cautions against operating on an extremely high level at all times. Right. Because eventually you'll reach a breaking point. You, do you hear that? It's, you're yeah. going you're gonna to reach I a feel, point. No, I don't just hear that. I feel that, you know, right. because what I know to be true is that if your mind don't just like break down, your body will, because you start to feel these acute health sy symptoms from running on fumes like that. And, and you just... It's, it's awful because then at the same time, if, while you're balancing the two things, what happens is you don't do either one really well, and then you beat yourself up for not doing right. each one well. Because you know you're, you know that you could be that manager and be that person if you could be there hundred percent. But then at the same time, you know you have to deal with your son and his issues. So um, the other thing, I guess I'm gonna bring up Kip again because those teachers they totally yeah. I'm gonna stop sharing me. this. Yeah. Okay. okay. Those, those teachers totally supported me in that, in that I had to like literally try to build myself back up again. Okay. And, and my Kip family, like they, they struggled with me. They saw my struggle and they totally, um, they were totally there for me. So, right. so one thing that I, I'm going to talk to the audience about is self-care. Mm -hmm. And, and the biggest thing to self-care for me now is saying no. Okay. You got to okay. say no. You're going to have, I had people coming at me because I was so used to like, like troubleshooting everybody's life, you know, and, and taking on things because I was like superwoman. But now girl, I say no. I and you have to. And mm -hmm. so what, you know, what no looks like is to start saying it. Yep. If you yep. know you can't do it and you know, you don't have to be a people pleaser. That, that's a whole nother segment right? Mm -hmm. Codependency and people pleasing, right? But
But having healthy boundaries means that when you cannot do something, you can say no, and it's okay. Even if you've been that person um, that was always the person that went out and, and put out fires or started up <laughs> different kind of people or whatever, and it's you're maxed out. Just say, I can't do it. I'm sorry. I don't have the ability or the capacity to do it. But what I typically do is say, here's somebody that I can refer you to that can because I, I can't right now, you know? And you just have to practice that sometimes, Toya, don't you think? Yeah. And the other thing I did was I got to actually, I got a, I got a coach. I got a life coach. Oh. Yes. Yes. Her name is Hil Hillary Beard. And she, and, and then we sat down and we went and she taught me how to do um, mindfulness, tapping, how to center myself, how to take the anxiety away and um, how, how to, um, prioritize my feelings and where mm -hmm. I fit into other situations and then also um, how to set boundaries because if you don't set those boundaries people are going to automatically um, just move into your space and try to take your energy away that's and, true and the thing that's about true. it is that's what they're used to but right. one, you have to re-establish these relationships so that right. you can set your boundaries you know right that's true. That's true. You know, if you don't set the healthy boundaries, then people are not able to um, determine where the line is drawn. Right? right. Right. And so I was just talking to my kids about this the other day. I was telling my daughter, um, for her at 14, she has a different set of rules that she plays by than her nine-year-old brother. They're five years apart plus boy, girl. Right. I said for him, you are bothering him by being in his bubble space. He don't want you all up in his bubble space. I heard him say it a few times. Um, you know, you're in my, in my space, you know, and she was thinking that she was being helpful. And I said, but to him, it's not helpful. To you, you feel like you're helping, but to him, it's an attack, right? right and right. so... You have to meet people where they're at. And I was like, you're the one that has to really meet him where he's at more so because you got five years on him, honey. And you get it. And so he's still trying to like navigate through what is a boundary and what's not. He's still like bubble space, <laughs> you know? Right. And um, But you know what he's saying, right? Um, and so it's okay. And maturity will allow for us to d dictate those spaces, those lines, those boundaries, um, and feel comfortable about them. You feel comfortable about them. So the other thing, the other thing though, for is to ask for help. Mm. You know, as a strong person, sometimes it's very hard to ask for help. That's hard for and, me, Toya. <laughs> I, I know, but at the same time, Christina, like I know, like a lot of parents on the on you know in the audience, they mm. might not be able to get a hire a coach. You know right. that. that but what they could do is look in their resources and see who they could go to and just ask That's for help. True. You know, you, I, we have so many friends in, in a network. You have a parents union for, for um, goodness sake. Go out and, and you know, talk to Christina or talk to whoever that well, you know. I'm just saying. I'm I did. I did my nose today. No, I'm playing. <laughs> I found you. I found you. I, found, I mean, that, that's important. You know, that's really important. Yeah, no, really. Yeah. So the other, the other mm -hmm. thing to um, center myself, I do a lot of journaling, oh, you know, okay. in the morning. And then I do um, a lot of inspirational journaling. So um, I'm looking my at daughter's your... gonna. My daughter is going to get really mad if I show you guys this because she has that same coping technique. And so I bought her this journal and it says, I can do all she things with Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. And so every day before she opens that journal and all her pins are there, shh, don't tell her. Um, she gets to have that message. So yes, that works. Yeah. I journal, I journal. And then the other thing is right. So Anxiety right. is really bad because of the uh, car accident and seeing all that. My anxiety can be out of control at times. So another um, thing that Hillary um, Beard taught me was at night, turn off the devices. You got to turn your devices off like at least a couple of hours before you go to sleep. You can't be like going to sleep like this. You know what I mean? You got right. you to you rest your mind. You know right. what I'm saying? And you have to turn the lights out. So you can't sleep with a light on. 
you know, so these, these, these things there, um, I did a lot of time staying at home mm -hmm. and figuring out what I wanted to do, figure out who I was. So it was almost like a life. It was a life changing event. It's all I that's good. It was a life changing event. That's good. Event. And, yep. and you, you surrendered the 110 percentage plus job, even though it was probably what you knew as successful, right? Yep. And I'm sure the income and all of that with surrendered all of that with it. And now you have where you're at now that is a life changing event um, because you went from functioning one way to totally living in another way. And I have to recap what you said, um, you know, saying no, right? Um, being able to journal, right? Turning those devices off um when it's time to go to sleep right you you don't you wouldn't take a, a a saw or a power drill into your bedroom at night when it's time to sleep and just turn it on and keep it on um you want your body to be able to shut down and asking for help asking for help i gotta work on that because you know i just you know it's, it's been very difficult and challenging to me being a giver and a helper to then say you know what i think i need help so i appreciate you saying that Mm -hmm. Yeah, and of course, I mean, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say I pray a lot, okay? It, I have to say that, you know, and, and prayer, prayer did a lot for me. It actually saved me as well, so I, I, I must, I must, I just got to say it. But um, also, so let me tell you something exciting really quick. How much time do we have left? You could go, just, you're okay. You have, okay. you All have right. a necessary, <laughs> this like, is managing moment by moment okay. day by day with me and national parents union you keep going okay so since it's really hard for me to um go out and protest right now because of all you know i really want to go but because of like i said i have rheumatoid arthritis which is debilitating and it's an autoimmune right. um disease i can't get out there so yeah. i decided to protest from within okay and that's when i came up with the um friends, scholars, teachers, friends of the eight black hands. And I, and right. And you guys too, of course, the national. Right. But what I did was I created a Facebook group, which I guess you have the link or whatever you could put in the chat. And, um, in that in group, right now. okay. In that group, we get to, um, share best practices. We need, we get to share resources and we occasionally have a debate just occasionally. We, we share um, self-care um, resources as well. So um, that's, that's my protest. That's my way of protesting. Which yes. Is, uh, what I really had to do, especially with our internet. You know, it's like internet for all. You know, I did go out to that rally. I snuck out, but yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Thank I you. snuck out to that rally. But um, it, it's been really tough. So um, to the parents out there, like, if you feel, this is the other thing I want to give you or leave you with. Uh, this work is really difficult and it could be taxing. It could be, um, it could be depressing on your, on your mind and your heart because of the disparities that are going out there. What I suggest to you is to bring yourself, find what gives you joy and yes. bring some joy to yourself. So I'm gonna give you an example of what I did. Okay. So, um, what I did was I started a, a group in two schools and it's a crochet club because to be honest with you crafting really takes down your stress level it actually um, produces endorphins and it calms you down and puts you into the moment just like um meditation does so yes. i craft so what i decided to do was to bring this skill that i have and give it to others especially nice. children in school so um i started to crochet clubs in two different schools one at Sharif's old Sharif El Meki's old school at mastery and we combined it with jewelry and black consciousness reading it was it was fabulous so my point is to the parents if, if you can't if you're feeling taxed by this work you could also do other work within the work you could help educate our kids with the education that you have right and, and you know it. that's amazing that you have um, the ability to share your skill and your talent, your cra crafting, right? And I was looking over here because to my left, shh, don't tell nobody, 
my daughter left her canvases down here. And I got to tell you a real quick story about that. So when my daughter was going to public traditional school, um, I knew she was an artist since she was little. Um, and she would just go around drawing what she saw all day. And I didn't have a problem with that. But when she started traditional school, she got in trouble for drawing during the day, right? And people didn't understand, like, this is her life. Like, school was came second. She got that. That was all. She had that all under the bag. She's a smart gal. But drawing was her life. Like, art was her life. Um, being able to draw what she saw around her in real time. And so I decided to pull her out because I was like, you guys are not going to kill this uh, ability in my daughter. Um, and when she's at home, sometimes she just goes and says, mommy, I have to go draw. I got to let something out. And I'm like, go create. And so I started buying her these canvases and she just took off with that. Look at that. She's mm -hmm. like, I'm going to practice. And my daughter's 14, right? I think I've shown this one before. Mm -hmm. She's going to be like, Mommy, you wasn't supposed to be showing the art on the show. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and so I started buying these bigger canvases. And she's wow. like, I'm going to use Beautiful. them. Right? And so can you imagine what would have happened if I would have kept her there and they were trying to just kill that talent? And I was like, no, mm -mm, you are not going to teach it. It came to the point where the teachers were like saying, I don't want Anaya to bring her art kit to the playground because she doesn't play. She draws instead. What? What's wrong with that? She's probably looking and, and, and um, capturing capturing what she saw right um if, and i know her and that's what she was doing and they would say well we're scared the other kids are going to take her crowns and color pencils and she had a whole kit that she would take to school uh, and they threw everything like to keep her from drawing at school and now you know that she's homeschooled she's she's free to do her art and so i appreciate what you say about crafting because some of our kids do different things that are like self, you know, calming or regulating techniques while they're learning at the same time, you know, and that's how they process. Yeah, I got the little girls in trouble though. They were, um, <laughs> some of the little girls, cause last year I had a, a group of like, from kindergarten up to third grade. And I forgot to tell the teacher that I was teaching them how to crochet and they were crocheting in class, which, you know, they, yeah. <laughs> well, you but, told them how but, to be taught. After I told them, it was okay. But right. um, yeah, yeah. Like the other thing that I did with my girls in at one school, before we started, because it was an after school program, before we started, we did mindfulness before we started the class. Okay. Because they would come in like all riled up and ready to just go crazy. And I needed to center all that energy into one, you know, force. So they could come, right. but they loved it. I mean, it was peaceful after they felt it. They totally felt the calming um, practices of mindfulness. But I, I mean, that's the other thing for the parents too. Um, when you look at your children and you see that a school doesn't support, it might, suppose it is a good, good school and they're doing fine by education. You always can supplement that education. Yes. Okay, so Christina, the, I did the same as you with my daughter, and she actually went to a, a art class at a local college every Saturday from third grade through 12th grade. Okay, so she, I supplemented her art because I know that the school that she went to didn't really have a great art program. Right. So I, I just supplemented the, the art program in the city. And yeah. can you repeat the name of the coloring book so oh, that yeah. I can share that and show it? Color for the Culture. Yeah. Um, and I'm typing her um, daughter's name in the chat. You can get more information about Color for the Culture um, coloring book. Grab a copy for your children. Yeah. Um, definitely worth it. Um, and yes, yeah. I looked through it. Amazing. Um, and so if you have a final... Thought. Yeah, yeah. My my final thought is uh, don't mean to say uh, but anyway, it's my, okay. I say okay. it all the time. Okay. <laughs> my my final thought is to find what centers you, and to definitely take care of self care.
find your yes. self-care. Don't go without it, okay? Find your peace. Find what brings you joy and do it. Right. Don't just right. sit it off to the side. Practice it. Right. You know, if, you can't, if you can't do yoga, then, then walk. If you can't lift weights, you know, walk. That's me. My thing is walking because I, I'm not, I, I don't have the strength like I did. So I, I walk or I crash, right. but I find my joy. That's my final thought. And watch what you eat and drink a lot of water. <laughs> drink a lot of water. You mm -hmm. know, you, especially where I live, I have to hydrate, be hydrated the whole day before. Um, I even go out for my walks, you know, I'm glad to be back home. I was out of town for a little while, but I was not excited about coming back to 122. Well, the other thing is, Christina, right? if they, if the parents tend, if they join that Facebook great, um, group that I told you about on yes. Saturday mornings, you remember I tagged you in it with Dr. Paul Hopkins, who teaches you how to eat healthy and what herbs and, and natural medicine can supplement how, how it can supplement your body. Okay, yes. And I love watching Dr. Paul for those of you who um, want to know more about that group that she shared, I definitely put that in the comment field. You can always reach back out to me for more information of anything that you've seen shared on my shows, um, Christina at mpunion.org. Now, um, before I go, I have an announcement. Thank you so much, Toya, Auntie Gigi, for coming um, and giving us that vital information on self-care and mental health resources that you know, look, we have to take care of our minds and our bodies. Um, you know, some people could be real healthy in their body, but your mind could just be just stressed out. Um, and that'll make your body stressed out. You know, ultimately, you have to be in sync. You have to have that balance. You have to be centered. Um, and so I really appreciate the information that you shared with us. And Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Have a great day out there, okay? Bye-bye. You, bye. So I have um, one more thing that I wanted to share with you guys upcoming tonight. Um, and really, I'm on Pacific time. And so if you guys can see that, um, it is the Fund All Kids Virtual Youth summit it is going to be today uh and it is a student uh panelist look at those cute faces we just love the kids um it is going to be at 6 30 p.m and that is pacific standard time be sure that you tune in to that um talking about funding for all kids um nobody should be omitted omitted from that uh, and it is a virtual youth summit so i hope that you guys could definitely um enjoy coming to that learning how you could get involved learning how you could help and support um definitely gonna put the chat i mean i'm sorry the uh, summit post in the comment field right now as a matter of fact so that you can figure out how to get to that again starts at 6 30 uh, Pacific Standard Time. Now, thank you for watching Managing Day to Day with me, Christina Laster, and National Parents Union. I hope you're all well. I hope that you all thrive. Goodbye, America's beautiful children. We love you. And make sure that you are taking care of yourself intentionally, focused on how you can be balanced through life, moment by moment, day by day. We'll see you again. Bye-bye. Okay, you're out. Did you want me to bring her back over from the...